do 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 focusing. <sighs> Good evening, friend, which is nobody. I'm just going to speak to myself for the moment. Since for some reason, Facebook never allows us to somehow do the video that we pre-post. So, I don't know, call it false advertising, be angry at us, but you can never preview the video that we're doing. Maybe because Alex initiates it and I join in. Um, but, uh, yeah, for some reason, I always have to start a fresh video. So, our apologies for, for that misdirection there. Uh, Mr. Jones, what is up, man? I miss you, dude. I know you've been on the road a lot, but I uh, hope you and your family had uh, a great holiday and hope to uh, see your 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 charming uh, uh, eyes and beautiful disposition soon. Um, so, yeah, I have um, Alex uh, won't be joining us on the live feed tonight. Um, so he will be answering questions in the comments and, and adding uh, through that. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, so um, we'll wait a minute, a little bit longer. Um, so the the overall uh, overview for for this uh, this chat um, and live feed is basically we got a, a couple changes and announcements uh, uh, before we really get into the the 2019 season. Um, again, we have uh, uh, Omega's uh, Revenant game at D Day Action Park in Oklahoma. Um, and that'll be falling on the weekend of April 26th and 28th. Um, and then we'll have Desolation 2 back at uh, uh, the Skirmish uh, Paintball USA. Uh, and that'll be June 7th to 9th. So, um, so yeah, so looking forward to those. And we, uh, we'll, we, we're, we're going to lock down a third event for the end of the summer. Um, again, we're just trying to make sure the location is uh, uh, easy for people to get to. Um, not overly remote, but also nice and cool. So we're not all, you know, having a weekend of heat exhaustion and, and good times like that. Um, so, all right, well, I got Ralph and my wife and, uh, Alex. So let's, uh, let's start doing this. We'll see who else joins in. Uh, hey, what's up, Christian? Um, and, uh, whatever. And people can always go back and, uh, you know, view it at their own time and leisure. Uh, be mindful that, uh, we, Alex and I uh, have talked, and we will start posting up a little um, overview of our videos on the Omega General Interest Group. Um, so you can always get a little little overview of that. Yo, what's up, Trav? How you doing, homie? Wonder what you ordered up for backpacking. Mm -hmm. I'll have to get with you and figure out, uh, pick, pick your mind and see what you, what you spent money on. Um, but, all right, so let's... Uh, let me try to do this in a different order because I think the interesting stuff that we want to talk about first, we should maybe, you know, wait a minute for a couple more people to join. Um, but uh, a couple of things. So, uh, number one, uh, pyro and grenades. Um, so, we are going to make less money and we are now going to include EG67 grenades as in-game resources. Uh, for you to find and use as your leisure as our events progress throughout a weekend. Um, uh, yeah, come on. Thanks, Trev. Um, sorry, I gotta stop reading that shit and just freaking talk. Um, anyhow, all right, so, uh, so grenades. So, yeah, grenades, EG67 uh, uh, grenades will now be included as in game resources. Um, so, what that means, though, is that players and participants no longer can bring outside grenades with them. So, no, no Thunderbees, no EG67s, no Tagins, nothing like that. Um, so, we're going to pay for them for you folks to use. Um, but, again, you're going to have to fight over them and acquire them, such as all the other included in-game resources, such as ammo, food, water, BBs. Uh, ammo casings, which is our, 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 our money system, uh, marked casings at that. So if you are a, a range enthusiast and want to bring your own ammo casings, uh, we'll, we'll make sure quite quickly that we'll be able to tell uh, what's been provided by us and what other people had decided to try to sneak on there and kind of game the game a bit. So uh, we've been around the block a couple times, so uh, we, we're, 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 we know how to catch this stuff. Um, so smoke grenades, though, for and, 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 Smoke grenades are not included as of yet. So smoke grenades mean that 
Uh, participants can bring their own smoke grenades if they're approved for the venue that we are using. Um, so for Revenant um, at D-Day Action Park, uh, EG-67s, I'm sorry, uh, EG, um, the whole entire EG line of smoke grenades uh, will be allowed and participants can bring as many as they want. Um, at, um, and I believe the sport smoke is also uh, allowed for, for D-Day. At Skirmish for Desolation 2, the, the only smoke grenades that are allowed, are, I believe, are sport smoke. Um, I believe Skirmish actually has a little little um, uh, pro shop there. Uh, they have EG paint grenades, which we don't use and are not included, but they, they do have sport smoke. Um, but I'm pretty sure our, our friends Chris and Kurt from Amped, uh, we, we could probably talk them into making sure that they have a bunch for sale uh, for all those last-minute needs for, for our participants at, at Desolation. And even maybe Revenant. We'll have to talk to those guys about and see uh, um, what, their, what their plans are for that. Um, so basically, a uh, quick overview on that is uh, grenades. Uh, pyro grenades will now be included as in-game resources uh, at no additional charge to participants. Uh, that being said, though, no grenades can be brought in by participants that are used to kill or eliminate people. Uh, that, that goes for, for their own EGs, um, uh, uh, Taggins, um, and, and, and Thunderbees, and, and whatnot. Um, and we will allow participants to bring uh, EG7s, I'm sorry, what do I see? EG18 and the EG line of smoke grenades and sports smokes um, uh, of, their, of their choosing. Uh, they're allowed to purchase those and bring those to D Day. Um, and you're only allowed to use sports smoke at uh, Skirmish USA, but again, you're allowed to buy those and, and use them as you see fit. Uh, those are not in-game resources. Doesn't mean that we won't include some. Now, the caveat with the smoke grenades is you cannot use yellow smoke. Any color but yellow, if you have yellow, we're going to just take them from you. Um, so, or, or just disallow your usage. Um, yellow smoke, again, is one of our in-game game mechanics of being dust clouds um, that will kill you if you don't have a respirator mask system to, to put on and don on before that cloud of dust hits you. But that will be in the form of the Cloud Makers by Enola Gay. Um, and those are, are just brilliant smokes. I, I just can't ever recommend those enough for event promoters out there. Uh, give those in all the gay uh, cloud makers. Uh, but we use yellow smokes to denote that game mechanic. So yellow smoke is prohibited from participants uh, uh, bringing um, uh, to the event. Um, so we got a bunch of people now there. We got Naya showed up. We got Pete and a bunch of other people. Um, so let's uh, let's go in through the list from the the top down now. So uh, the big change that, you know, uh, it's been actually about the most biggest contested rule. Uh, and honestly, the, uh, people wanting us to kind of make a, a changes and amendments to it um, just shows me that how gear-centric people ha are, in, are in Aerosoft. Uh, but what we, we changed the, the tactical gear uh, limitations uh, to allow people a greater flexibility of creativity of, of loadouts and, and, and gear setups. Um, honestly, most people that are probably trying to show up some decrepit, you know, plate curio will probably realize it's just more of a burden um, than, than a positive note. But um, Alex and I, through long talks and deliberation, uh, we are basically going to allow you to use any sort of tack gear. Um, as long as it's distressed and it fits the theme, um, obviously, the, you know, the more thematic, the, the cooler you're going to be, and, you know, people will, will, will want to be like you. Um, but, yeah, so basically we, we removed our tactical gear restrictions. Now, there's always a pro to a con and a con to a pro. So while we've removed the restrictions, um, we also integrated those gear loadouts with our with our new bounty system so our new bounty system moving into that now is uh was going to be uh, a, a several fold system and the bounty system i'm talking about is our npc and game controlled bounty systems now that doesn't prohibit anybody else out there from trying to put their own bounty on somebody else that's out there um but again make sure again when you're doing that as always with omega the number one rule is making sure that you're not ruining somebody's good time 
um, and ruining someone's immersion and making sure you're just not being a dick. Uh, but that being said, um, the bounty system, uh, what we have implemented for game control bounty systems is that uh, we will be taking Polaroids of players uh, prior to your game start. And if a bounty is placed upon you, uh, that will go up on a bounty board, which will be in a known, more centralized area uh, where staff will pretty much be staging out of for the duration of the event prior um, after uh, check-in and registration. Um, but so we'll actually have a bounty system um, uh, in place uh, that will start with a Polaroid. Um, now we're going to allow and encourage uh, phone usage. Uh, for, for several full basically think of it as our ghetto equivalent of a pit boy fallout style um, So the phone will be good for for several reasons because that's going to allow you to be able to take photos so if you happen to Kill somebody that has a bounty on them. You can take a photo of that bring it back to the person who is operating the bounty board and you can receive an in-game uh, bonus for 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 completing that bounty um, uh, accountability for player induced bounties that's going to be on them to figure out how they they want that done uh, but again I would probably encourage just taking a photo of somebody that a bounty has been placed on and bring it back to the person that has requested the bounty and given them basically as proof of, of a kill and, 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 and deal with the bounties that way um, the, the phones will also allow people to download GPS systems um, because again we're starting to go to bigger and bigger places with more people um, Average outdoor enthusiasts don't know orienting well and how to get around the woods other than the familiarity of the woods that they normally trek in. Um, and you know that the average person is going to have no idea. So to prevent people from getting lost, um, we're, we're, we're going to, uh, you know, allow and encourage, you know, phone usage, um, especially the, 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 the phone um, aspect of, of uh, taking photos for, for bounties as well as um, using a GPS to get around. Um, we're going to discourage people from actually calling each other, you know, in game, unless in this extreme emergency. But obviously, a phone in this day and age is an important resource tool, and we want people to have them um, in case they need to make a call home or get a call from home or, 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 or have to deal with an emergency. So, uh, so yeah, so make sure, but um, as you pack your phones on the field, uh, make sure if you're carrying it, you don't lose it. You don't want to lose an expensive iPhone um, at D-Day Park. You're never going to get it back. Um, as well as uh, your, make sure you put it in a Ziploc sealed baggie or some other waterproof, watertight container because you just don't want to get your phone wet because, again, Omega events go through any elements. Um, so um, I'm going to go to the next one is that since we talked about GPS, you know, what we learned is that sometimes I'm going to get back into the bounties. I'm going I'm to rework this all the way back in here, but these are happen to tie in here. Um, so what we learned at Desolation, you know, uh, especially during the nighttime and even during the daytime, is that people can quasi get lost and not figure out where they're at. Um, on all occasions, we've been able to recover people or they've been able to find their way back and whatnot. Uh, but in some places like, like skirmish, I mean, the, do we we can't get an accurate map. I mean, we got pictures of tree canopy, um, so we're going to work on trying to get one done for for us for people to find in games. But sometimes the fun is also trying to, to discover a, a place for the first time. Um, that being said, there's plenty of maps out for for, for D Day, but you know, people don't know how to read a map and don't bring a compass, which I definitely, you know, always bring a compass. You know, that's how I ne ne negotiated the entire uh, uh, nighttime finding people um, is basically by orientating with a compass, uh, not even using a map, um, as well as, uh, uh, you know, if, if you can get a map, get one, bring one. You know, it's going to help you out there. But a lot of people don't know how to read a map, so that's why the phones will be important for the GPS. But what happens when you, you lose your phone, your battery dies, um, um, gotcha, Hampton. Thanks, man. Sorry, guys. I, I'm trying not to read. I'll try to have uh, Alex answer your, or add to your guys' comments there. Um, but um, anyhow, uh, so so worst case scenario, you, you lose your phone, you're lost, don't have a map, don't have a compass. Uh, I, I have a track record at my field, the war zone up in Niagara Falls, New York. As well as at events and things that I've done, and especially under my command, under American Milsim, uh, nobody has died under my care, and I want to keep that record pristine. 
right, so I don't want you getting lost and dying of emaciation up inside the, uh, 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 the woods. So we are now going to require as a mandatory packing uh, item on our gear list that everybody needs a rescue whistle. Uh, they're, they're quite inexpensive. I think they're like 250 maybe a two-pack for like six bucks at, you know, any reputable outdoor store. But a rescue whistle will be mandatory. You will have to have a lanyard. You will have to have it around your neck the entire event. Uh, that means that if something ever goes wrong and it goes bad, you have a whistle that is loud as all get out and somebody will be able to hear it and will be able to find you to deal with getting you back to where you need to go. Um, or dealing with a medical emergency. Uh, so yes, for, for, for 2019 and going forward at all Omega events, um, all participants are going to be required to have a rescue whistle. Um, and I'm pretty sure uh, does uh, that, that the, we'll, we'll have some on hand for sale pregame for those that forget them, lose them, and whatnot. It'll probably be something like a dead rag. You're, you're going to want to have more than one because they always get misplaced and whatnot. But um, you know, as a as an outdoor guy and somebody who believes in safety first, um, uh, rescue whistles will now be mandatory uh, packing gear for all participants attending our events. Um, so I want to segue into the night game, but let me go back to to the to the bounty system. So we've got some fresh faces here. So so bounties are going to be an in game mechanic that are are induced by the Omega event staff and NPCs. Um, but again, participants, if you you know got some dude that's been looting you all weekend long, you want to induce your own bounty, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, but the way we're going to do the bounties is that we're we're taking polaroids of people, um, and uh, people will be able to find a bounty board. If that bounty's out there, and you shoot and eliminate somebody, take out your phone, take a picture, go back to the person who's operating the bounty board, and you'll get your reward for for completing that that bounty. Um, now, what would constitute a bounty on somebody as far as the, the NPCs or the game staff would, would induce? Uh, well, that's going to be a several thing. You know, sometimes we may do it to pick on some of our friends that we love so much. Sometimes we may do it to redirect uh, how, you know, maybe the event is, is rolling. You know, we're not here to control it, but we're also to make sure that it doesn't go so far off course that it's, it's a lost cause. Um, but we also, in allowing and removing the uh, tactical gear, you know, limitations, uh, that in real life, if you look like a target of opportunity, you're going to be a target of opportunity. And in a day and age where their tech years has been all consumed in conventional warfare for 40 years, um, and it's not that readily available, that if you want to show up and you want to wear your distressed, LBV or, or ratted up like, you know, freaking apocalyptic freaking play carrier. I mean, it's got to fit the theme. I mean, don't be showing up like you just came from a Milsom event, you know, in a shiny plate carrier and, and trying try to rock. I mean, I mean, it's part, a big part of this entire event is you, you got to get into it. You know, you got to get in there. But um, so what you want to do is basically that uh, uh, not, not that you want to do. So what we're going to include is that if you want to wear more gear, you want to present yourself that you're more high and mighty and you're a threat and you're somebody that's worth eliminating so somebody can loot you, that may influence the game mechanics and making you a more of a bounty uh, target than, than not. You know, so that guy that shows up looking like some freaking homeless beggar is probably not going to be a threat, and he's probably not going to get messed with as much as somebody who comes rolling up with 40 guns strapped to their back, a giant rucksack, looking like they, 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 they have everything going for them. You're going to be a target in real life, and you're going to end up probably being a target in the game. So... The pro of us removing the tactical gear uh, restrictions limitations, that, dude, if it's thematic, go wild, man. But if you want to overdo it, just be careful. There could be repercussions to that, and you may be more of an in-game threat and target of opportunity than you may think. So choose wisely. Um, that also being said, you know, we've been trying to figure out a way to kind of rework some of the role-playing aspects. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be directing our NPCs to directly base some of their role-playing 
on how the people they're interacting with as participants are dressed and behaving. So if you're showing up all gucci and, and, and you know, living the high life in the apocalypse, well, you're probably going to get more negative results from dealing with NPCs and staff members as far as that goes. Uh, worse trade value. Um, maybe misdirection, misinformation, and whatnot. But if you want to look like that, uh, you know, guy who's down on his luck and people are going to be more sympathetic, um, or somebody who looks a little bit more uh, business persuasive like somebody who could actually talk a good talk in the sales game, uh, that's probably going to give you a positive influence on the NPCs and staff members and how they're going to treat and uh, uh, behave with you as far as, you know, maybe giving you better intel, giving you better trade value and whatnot. So we want people to put a conscientious lot of thought into their, their loadouts and how they want to act and behave. So if you want to be uh, a target, be a target. You know, if you want to, you know, try to, you know, be that gray man and, and, and not be noticed and survive the weekend and never firing a shot and using dialogue and negotiation, uh, we've now created room for you to do that as well. Because the ultimate goal at the end of the day is to last the weekend, you know, and some of that will be based on, on what you bring to help you survive the weekend. Uh, giving the, the elemental conditions that the events will take place in, um, as well as that's going to be some of the effects that, you know, how you play the game itself. And that goes from anywhere on requiring the resources that you're going to need, to helping out others, to betraying others, to, to shooting, looting. All that stuff, it's open-ended. But always remember, you know, there, there's consequences in-game that go with your actions and the results will become, a, you know, you know we'll, we'll speak from the cells. So, I uh, definitely want to get people more involved and more immersed in our game. So we're creating more mechanics and atmosphere to encourage people to, to do so. Okay, so uh, we talked about phone usage as far as an in-game tool. Uh, grenades and pyro, um, again, for anybody who came in late, uh, real quick, uh, we are including EG67s in our events now, free of charge. Uh, that be minded, it's an in-game resource, which means you cannot bring your own anymore. As far as kill grenades go, so no thunder bees and pyro grenades, but we are allowing participants to bring their own smoke grenades as long as they're approved for our venues. Uh, you could bring as many as you want, um, but for right now, uh, uh, Revenant will be uh, sports smoke and EG line of smoke grenades, and uh, Desolation 2 will only be sports smoke. Um, so, bam, 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 moving along. So, night game. All right, so night game gets difficult, as we found, when it's not very moonlit or overcast or you're in a wooded canopy. Um, it's hard to see, right? And it's hard to, to, to get around. Um, so we, we, we enacted and we're going to expand upon the usage of tiki torches, especially in designated areas of interest. Uh, what Carl? Um, and uh, we're also going to use green chem lights to mark paths to and from main areas of interest during the night game. Um, again, you're, you're, you can wander around and do whatever you want to do, but to kind of get some, some, some concentric play, maybe known bandit camps or whatnot, points of interest that will be worth searching out at night, we will be using green chemlets to, to, to mark those areas up. Um, that being said, for anybody who's never attended uh, 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 an Omega event, we use blue chem lights to designate out-of-play areas at night, as well as blue caution tape to caution those areas off. So if you see blue, that's probably a community safe haven and out-of-play at night. If you see green, it's probably either marking a trail or going to mark an area which should be of interest and, uh, and, and to figure out where you're going and where you go. So that being said, uh, don't bring blue chem lights and don't bring green chem lights. Those are for us and those are staff appropriated uh, colors and items. Um, cool. So moving on, we want to ratchet up the night games a bit. A lot of people like to chill out. Um, I know I got a, you know, I don't want to say flack, but some people who want, you know, the communities to be attackable at night. And, you know, we just, for insurance and safety reasons, we just can't have that. There's just certain people who get quite irritable. I'm one of them. If I was messed with when I'm sleeping, I'm, when it comes down to fight or flight, I'm a fight person. And if you want a quick punch to the throat, 
wake me up when I'm in a deep sleep abruptly and, and things don't go well. Um, but that being said, also a big part of our events is, is community and getting that, that communal time for friends that you know, friends that you meet, to be able to sit around a fire at night and talk about your, your, your tales and your, your tribulations throughout the day. And it's a great bonding time. It's an important part of, of, of the hobby of Aerosoft. Almost every event and, and endeavor I like to do. Um, I've done solo hiking and stuff like that, but things are just always better when you do it with, with people you enjoy being around it and friends, um, whether the ones you already have or ones that you, you'll meet. Um, so the, the downtime in the community is, is, uh, is important, and it really just comes down to safety issues. You know, we, we have, um, you know, we'll have, you know, ringed fire uh, barrel pits for people to use. And somebody starts attacking that at night, someone trips over, falls, gets burned. It's a liability issue. And once insurance gets involved, that can ruin a lot of things for a lot of people, um, Omega included. Um, so there's just, you know, there's just certain things that while I'm trying to recreate situations, um, you know, insurance and safety standards are going to inhibit our ability to do some things. So at this point in time, you know, from dusk till dawn, you know, communities are still going to be out of play. As far as shooting and, and killing goes, it does not mean that those areas are out of play for any other sort of role playing uh, or any other type of interactions or or or, or going on. Um, so uh, we really want to ratchet up the night games a bit more um, and keep people from just wandering around, which is always stuff to scavenge and do and people to uh, Shanghai and ambush. Um, but we're going to use green chemites and tiki torches to to light up areas of interest to give some focal point to our, our, our nighttime activities. Um, Cool. So uh, moving on, Amazon gear list. So on our website, we now actually have a link to an Amazon gear list. Now this is not a required gear list. These are just suggestions of things that you know, um, Alex uh, painstakingly has perused and figured out uh, that would allow people an easy link or idea of like, oh, hey, I need to wear pants. Yes, you need to wear pants at our game, Travis. You know, so like, you know, you know, Alex likes 511 pants. Actually, I do as well, jeans and stuff like that. So there will, there will be a link for that. So we'll actually have links of suggested items and uh, we'll probably change it a bit um, and as time goes on, depending on, you know, uh, uh, if we find better options or not. And we are also toying around with the idea of coming up with, uh, you know, you know, you know, cheap good best you know list as well for some that just need something we, we have some cheap suggestions for them as well as you know something that's you know something once the 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 uber you know you know uh tarp you know we'll have that on there as well um so we'll, we'll have that that uh, that list on on our website uh to give uh uh, uh people and ideas and links for things to kind of help them, you know, figure out how to put together their, their own packing list um, and items that they may need and suggestions and ideas uh, to, to help them along and get involved in their events. <clears throat> now remember, you know, again, our events are, you know, do more with less. And I actually posed a, a $20 challenge out there, survival challenge that, I'm, that has nothing to do with Omega. It's just a little fun thing that people already do already. It's usually just a $10 challenge, but uh, uh, I think $20 is a little bit more reasonable where you have to go into like a dollar store and buy... $20 worth of stuff to allow you to survive a 24 hours in, in the wilderness. Um, I'll actually probably even try to implement that type of list uh, at an Omega event, you know, as well. Just to show people that you really don't need a lot to, to be successful in, in our events. And I'm still waiting for that one person to show up with the absolute bare minimum required gear needed and make it through the weekend on just their, their charm, wit, and devious diabolical uh, mannerisms and never have even fired a shot and whatnot. So I think it's doable. And I guess, yeah, I guess you can go find a spot in the woods and squirrel up and, and hide there the whole weekend. But I, I'm, someone's going to be able to, and a lot of people probably do that. You'll be an active participant and be able to make through the game and, and on, on your on your wit and, and, and intelligence and not actually through the trigger time. But the trigger time is there for the people that want the trigger time too. Um, so yeah, check out that Amazon list. It's probably going to be an evolving list, just like our rule set. But again, we don't do to try to confuse people and baffle people or misdirect people. Um, you know, we're just intelligent people and nothing in life should be stagnant. And if we kept things stagnant, we won't be able to, to change and evolve 
to give our participants, our customers, the best product that we possibly can. So I promise you, a lot of you people, folks haven't been to one of our events yet. Trust us, you're going to have a blast. I know your idea may be better. I know you've done things differently elsewhere another way, but trust us, uh, we have a pretty high customer satisfaction rating right now. Um, so definitely, you know, c come out and try it out. Be open-minded, you know, embrace what we're putting forth. I guarantee you, you'll, you'll, you're, you're going to have a, such a great time. Um, um, so uh, moving on. Cool, we're, we're streamlining this uh, live video. Um, Revenant. So we got two events already listed. We have a Revenant at DD Action Park in Wanda, Oklahoma. Uh, that's April 26th to 28th. Our friends from American Milsim will be doing uh, a pretty stellar event that they always do Memorial Weekend after that. Um, so what we're probably going to institute for people that go to the AMS event because they're, they're, they're family to me um, is that we're going to give you uh, some sort of an in-game perk. So eventually when they actually go live with those tickets, if you purchase a ticket, show us proof of that, uh, that, that you purchased that ticket, um, you're probably going to get a little additional in-game resource perk. Um, but uh, we have our uh, event there, Revenant, uh, April 26th to 28th. Um, I, we try to actually move it a little bit earlier in the year to give some some cooler temperatures. But you yeah, believe it or not, man, D-Day is a booked place. Um, so we, we got stuck with the 26th uh, through the 28th. So uh, we, we, we posted it, we committed it, and we're going to follow through. So all of our friends in the Midwest area or from wherever, we got a lot of people actually coming from from the New York area. Um, we hope to see you at Revenant. That'll be our first one to kick it off the year. Um, D-Day is going to be so dope for, for, for our style events. I can't, I can't wait to use it personally. Um, I've been there many times with American Milsim. Um, and, and, I mean, anyhow, I, I could join a D-Day sucks because it's the time of the year. It's always hot and ticky for when AMS does it. But they're actually moving uh, 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 Broken Home to the fall. So the big D-Day event for American Milsim will be in the fall. And I am so stoked to play there that time of year. Um, I love woods. I know a lot of people like mountain and buildings and CQB. Uh, I'm an old guy. I'm, I'm you know, I, I play, started in the woods. I, I just love playing in the woods. It, it's, it's so more it, as a leader as well. When we start speaking Milsim, it's, it's way more difficult to 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 lead and be successful in the woods. And I really appreciate the challenge over over mounts, which can be kind of sterile for me um, personally. But anyhow, uh, DD is going to be off the hook for for the mega event revenant. Uh, April 26th to 28th. Uh, tickets are still available for that. Uh, we're also doing uh, uh, Desolation 2. We're going back to the Poconos um, at Skirmish uh, Paintball USA. Um, and we will be there June 7th to June 9th for that event. Uh, be mindful, uh, the tickets for Desolation are pretty close to selling out. Um, so if you want to go to that one, I know it's a long time off. It's hard to plan that far out ahead, um, sometimes, uh, but yeah, get, get, get your ticket while they're available, um, because we will not be adding any tickets to, uh, uh, desolation, um, because it's just, we, we want to keep that one a little more intimate. We really enjoy that one and we want to keep that an, an intimate one for, 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 um, uh, uh, us personally. Um, uh, uh D-Day is pretty ginormous. Um, we could definitely fit more than 100 people. We have it currently capped at that, but we can add another, you know, 20 or so uh, if needed. But again, the whole goal is not to jam pack a whole bunch of people in an event that's themed around where 90% of the world's population is dead. It doesn't, doesn't fit right. So our events are always going to be try to be as open as possible for the amount of people uh, that are participating. Um, we're also actually been working on our third event. Um, that's going to be at the end of summer. Um, we're trying to finalize some things. Uh, the big issue with that, summers are hot everywhere. Um, and we, you know, we want to make sure we give people an opportunity to kick one off before they, you know, go back to school in and, and, and the fall. You know, Milsim season kicks in. Um, so uh, we're working on that one. It may be a little bit more of a drive, the one that we're currently trying to get. But it's, uh, we think it's going to be really, really cool. Uh, literally temperature-wise, but also the, the, the venue is pretty, pretty cool as well. Um, so we'll be working on that, and as soon as we get that locked down and contract signed and deposits paid, uh, we'll get that announced. But until that's done, we don't put the cart ahead of the horse and promise things that we can't deliver. Uh, so we'll, we'll be uh, announcing that stuff soon. So 
Uh, I'm pretty sure that Alex has been doing a great job answering questions in the uh, uh, question section. Um, if anybody has something that they want me to expand upon or ask something I missed that I should expand upon, uh, hit me up, post it up now. Uh, feel free to ask. Um, you know, there's no dumb questions, only the questions that aren't asked. Um, but until we get to that point, the quick review is that uh, no more tactical gear restrictions as long as they're thematic to a time and an era of desolation. Um, haha, desolation, like we name our events. Um, so they got to be thematic. You know, you want to wear a plate carrier and rut it up and put some bones and and, 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 and dirty it up, whatever, and make it look like it's been through hell and back. That that's cool. You know, I, I think it's 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 conducive to, to the style of play that you're going to be having out there. And you know, I think anyone who's been to one of our games already will tell you that they didn't need anything more than a pouch or two and maybe a pistol holster on a belt and a backpack for 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 looting and scavenging. Um, but you know, whatever. If you're that guy, you want to wear bandoliers and. Uh, have a cool freaking uh, uh, vest you did up, dude. You know what? It's cool. You got a reason for it. Um, that, that's awesome. Uh, so you, you can do that. You know, but if you wear more gear, you look like a bigger target of opportunity in our games. Uh, do you have to wear eye pro all the time? Uh, Clint, uh, the community areas at night, you can remove your eye pro. Those become safe havens from 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 uh, uh shooting um and uh at nighttime from dusk till dawn at the communities you could take your eye pro off um anytime you're on the playable ao and that includes the communities during daylight hours you have to have your eye pro on at all times if you have to remove your eye pro uh consult a staff member will get you to a secure area to deal with that and we always have staff members embedded in all the communities um, cool. Um, cool. Thanks for it, Alex. Um, so, um, so let, let me do the quick review and I'll, and I'll get to any, uh, questions and I'll spin through the feed real quick here. Uh, so yeah, so tech gear, you can wear whatever tech gear you want, as long as it fits the theme of our events where it's distressed. If you got to ask what distressed is, Google it. If you don't want to ratty up or throw your, your gear in mud to make it look like it's, it's beat up. Uh, then don't wear it and figure something else out. You know, get involved in the game, man. It's and, and really honest, you really don't need that much to have a great time at our stuff. Um, though, if you wear a lot of gear, you want to be all apocalyptic Gucci, um, you may have bounties placed on you and you may become a bigger target of opportunity. Uh, so be mindful, you know. Um, uh, we will have a, a in game uh, a controlled mechanic bounty system. Um, that doesn't in, uh, necessarily include, which if you want to, you can have player-based bounty systems, um, how you want to do that. Um, but our, our bounty system will be a series of Polaroids on a board. And now you can uh, basically, you know, check uh, the bounties and uh, take a picture with your phone of the people that you eliminate the bounty, bring it back to the person controlling the bounty board, and they'll get you a, a little, little, little something, something for your, for, for your dealings. Um, and again, a lot of how, how people can behave and whatnot will, 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 will and dress and, 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 and how much stuff you acquire will all be basing whether you get a bounty placed upon you and or not. Uh, hey, Clint, check out a rule set. Uh, the, the melee is, is discussed. Um, basically, uh, the quick overview is basically limited right about now to uh, rubber uh, training weapons, and it's basically a, a, a touch basis. No throwing, fling, violent action, stabbing, thrusting, throat slicing, anything like that, um, as far as that's going to do be. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so we're, we're going to work on Hampton right now, you know, specific du uh, duels. Um, uh, basically, I'm working on what our insurance allows because, again, there's a lot of different insurance for a lot of different things. I know a lot of LARP events, they, they allow you to do duels in, like, you know, foam-covered, you know, plastic tube, you know, weapons and whatnot. Um, I, I, I'm not opposed to starting a Saturday Night Thunderdome. Uh, where people who are definitely more under the LARPing side of things and have these LARP-approved weapons 
um, can bring there, and we can do duels and whatnot. I know some other LARP groups they they have they have the the, the juggernaut program with using like a pugil stick type system. Um, so I'm gonna try. I'm looking into right now and getting discussions with my partner Alex and how some that we can introduce a little bit more of a a a, a place and setting to place bets and, 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 and get together and have a little bit more melee-based uh, system. It may require helmets or something like that to avoid concussions, um, and but whatever. As soon as we get that figured out, um, I think that'll be a cool little, little aspect to do on Saturday nights, uh, especially for those that show up Friday night might already be kind of tired. It's a little, little, little change of pace to kind of you know sit back and watch a bunch of people, you know, duke it out. Um, so, uh, so... So anyhow, all right. Let me go back to the uh, the, the list here. Um, so bounty systems will have in-game uh, bounty systems. Uh, phone usage, yeah, bring it, man. Keep it sealed. Don't lose it. Um, but you're gonna be probably using that like a like a like our, our version of a pit boy, uh, using that to take take pictures um, of, of bounties. Um, using downloading a GPS for those who don't know how to get around the, the woods and whatnot. Um, and that uh, you know, so so still use this stuff. Uh, we highly discourage in-game calling to each other. Um, unless it's an emergency, um, but obviously I'm a married man. If my wife's calling me, dude, I'm going to uh, 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 take uh, take that phone call. All right, so make sure you have that phone with you. Uh, thanks, Paul. Yeah, I'm going to look into a little bit more. And um, I, I again, I, I think I think we can we can make that work, Paul. Um, so we're 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 just going to make sure we got what our insurance wants us to do uh, to, to make sure that we can make that happen. But I, I, I like that idea, and I, I appreciate you uh, bringing that up to me, Paul. So, so thanks for that. Um, so, um, so grenades and pyro. Uh, grenades, again, are not including the events. Uh, smoke grenades are not. So don't bring grenades to kill. Bring all the smoke grenades that you desire. Uh, but they have to be approved grenades for the venues, and right now the only smoke grenades you're allowed to bring to D-Day Action Park are going to be EJ smokes, EG smokes, and uh, sports smoke and uh, skirmish for Desolation 2 is only going to be sports smoke. Um, we are now going to make sure that everybody is now mandatory. you got to get yourself a rescue whistle, uh, something that's a high decibel whistle. Um, it's got to be laying you to run your neck at all point times. Not everybody's a woods person out there, and even the best woods person gets lost or, or breaks your leg. The, the phone goes down the cliff, uh, and, and they're, they're stuck out there. So for, for safety issues and finding lost people, and uh, we're, we're requiring uh, uh, a, a rescue whistle to be a mandatory item on our packing list now. Um, night game, um, again, uh, communities are out of play, but you're free to roam and have fun. Uh, ambushing people and doing what outside of those community areas as far as uh, killing and looting goes. Um, communities are still in play for, for role-playing and other, other uh, aspects that aren't shooting, stabbing, killing. Um, but to also focus pl play areas at night, we will now be using uh, designated green chem lights to, to mark paths um, as well as uh, certain areas along with, with tiki torches. <clears throat> Uh, uh, so blue cam lights are always going to be used to designate communities at night, so people know that it's a safe zone. Um, so, and, and green will be used to designate areas of interest. We'll, we'll say. Um, that being said, don't bring and use. Uh, hey, Josh, why don't you read a rule set? Because a lot of that's in a rule set, brother. Omega slash EPI. Um, I'll, I'll answer it for you, but it's, it's yeah, it's quite apparent that you have not read that. But yeah, no NVGs are are, are not allowed. Um, basically, there's a battery scarcer, uh, scarcity um, in this timeline and theme. There's been 40 years of conventional warfare. All those battery technology has been diverted. All batteries are pretty much made overseas, and there's just been no shipments of that. Um, we'll, we'll 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 come up with a little addendum that somehow at that point in time. Um, you know, phones will have uh, a nuclear battery that never go bad, and you are allowed flashlights and batteries there. Uh, but basically, we're trying to make sure that you know it, it fits the theme a bit more, um, as well as uh, um, that you know technology is is, is is was advanced, but it's also becoming scarce as far as the working capabilities of it, um, as well as it's going to make the games more interesting and not give somebody uh, a pay for advantage. 
um, as far as that goes. You know, we want everybody going into these games for, for on equal footing. Um, and, and, and you know what, and that's why a lot of the, we keep moving more, you know, like the, the grenades were now in game resource to basically they're there, you can get them, but everyone's going to have the same equal opportunity to get the exact same grenade and use it as they see fit for, for their, their endeavors in, in the game. Um, uh, we have a, an Amazon recommendation list on our website tonight as well. Um, basically some things that we just kind of put together uh, that coincide with our packing list to give you ideas and links to things to buy if they interest you. Um, that's an involving thing. So, you know, check that out. They'll, they'll, they'll help people who are going to events, give people some ideas what they may already have or maybe some ideas, some things that they may want to buy. Um, and they'll have all links for that stuff as well. Um, and again, just to recap, you know, we have our revenue event in Oklahoma, uh, uh, D-Day Action Park, um, April 26th, 28th. You know, as well as uh, our Desolation 2 event um, at back at Skirmish uh, USA, and that's June 7th to June 9th. That being said, uh, I'm getting hoarse. Let me take a well-deserved beer break. Oh, gosh. Got that at Polias, New Mexico. Oh, actually, no, I didn't. Uh, my buddy Clay from uh, New Mexico brought this one to me, too, at Reindeer Games. But that's usually what I drink when I'm out in New Mexico for, for, for the Amos event out that way. And if you, anybody out there, you play Milson, obviously come to our events, save your money, and go to Copperhead. Copperhead is the bomb diggity. Um, American Milson's Copperhead, Plyce, New Mexico, Labor Day weekend. Um, I, if I could buy my ticket now, I'd already buy my ticket now. It's a pain in the butt. It's the middle of nowhere. Uh, the, the, the country is gorgeous. It's an entire freaking town. Um, I don't know what it's about it, but it's just something about that place. Everybody goes to Copperhead will, will agree with me to go to Copperhead. It's definitely a, an event not to, to miss. Um, all right, let me just go back here for a bitty bit here. Let's see what we got here. Hi, everybody who joined in and left. Um, thank you for, for that. Um, sorry, folks. Uh, da -da -da. Scanning, scanning. I'm pretty sure Alex answered all the questions anywhere. I just want to see if there's anything that's interesting to expand upon. Yes, Carl, get your ticket. Get a hold of me, dude. Carl, we need to talk about some things. Um, I'll, um, maybe sometime the, this week, um, after the weekend. I know you got to run events. We have, like, negative wind chill weather and, and, and a snowstorm coming, so, so I will not be running games this weekend. But you know, sometime, maybe in the, uh, being the week, Carl, if you're still um, uh, watching this video, uh, hit me up when you got some free time or I'll, I'll hit you. Um, da, da, da. yes, Pete, I did that 16 hour drive a lot of times, but we'll get you out there. Uh, Josh, hey, official high, love you, man. Uh, Clint, do we have to wear a pro? We got that. Yeah, cool. Saber, fine sword, fall. cool. Uh, Melee talked about that. Bam, bam. Comms, uh, I don't know, uh, Josh, if you're still on, you got the comms question answered. I, my printout of our packing list is all in black and white. Uh, so, uh, Alex, if you're watching, our, our, do we make radios mandatory? I think we do. Um, uh, my few radios are mandatory. Uh, radios are, are an important communication tool to, to, to play and participant, uh, participate. But at the end of the day, it's a great safety tool. Um, it's it's an instant communication with staff or, or, or other people that you're supposed to be around with. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I believe radios are definitely are are are, 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 are uh, mandatory, if not overly highly encouraged, um, as far as that's going to go. Um, community leaders will usually have a frequency that they can set up their 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 their, their own frequencies on, um, but you know staff always have a fixed radio. So if you ever have an emergency. Um, need to get a hold of for anything, we'll, we'll make sure that our participants can, can reach a staff member uh, instantly uh, as far as that's going to go. Um, thank you. They are mandatory things, buddy. Uh, possibility calls, no NVGs, word. Cool, cool, cool. All right, spinning through along. Whose birthday's coming up? Clint. All right, dude. Cool, man. We'll have to bring some, uh, I'll, I'll try to remember that. I'll bring some. Uh, uh, scavengeable uh, uh, little Debbie's cake so we can celebrate the birthday, man. Um, oh, later, Josh. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Water sources. Uh, streams, Omaha Beach. Okay, so, uh, all right, Travis. Uh, water sources at D-Day. 
Um, so Omega, we do provide water. Um, you know, in various forms, uh, they may be in ginormous bulk containers, which you can take back or siphon out of. Um, they may be in ones that are fixated where you have to siphon out of and you can't take them uh, back to your community or remove. And there's always going to be uh, the water bottles. And there you go. Alex chiming in on that uh, with an awesome answer again. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, depending on the event and the time of the year, there's certain things that we have to cater for that event, um, such as, you know, uh, cooking and fire allowances, um, or pyro allowances, and, and water is going to be one of those. Some events where water may be scarce, we're going to require people to start with more initial water. Uh, some places where maybe water is overabundant, we may scale it back um, or at a time of the year where we're, we're not concerned about dehydration. But again, I'm going to go back on, we have a pristine track record of nobody dying at our events. And we're going to make sure that people don't, you know, fall out through through dehydration. And it's a beautiful thing at our events. You know, you play it at your own pace. Uh, you need to take a couple hours break and move the game. It's not going to affect anybody else's game. And you know, if you're if you're having issues, uh, we'll always have an EMT on staff to to, to help you out and deal with that as well. Um, thank you, Paul, for for calling in there. Da, da, da. Radios, mandatory for safety. Cool, cool. Right on, right on. Soup. All right, cool. All right, man. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, oh the, the water. Oh, so so D-Day, Travis. Um, so my buddy Travis asked about D-Day Action Park. There is a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a creek that goes through D-Day. Uh, there's a pretty nasty stagnant pond as well. So there are some natural water uh, resources. Uh, so participants are allowed to filter or purify water that they find and can scavenge naturally on the field, right? You can use debris to build houses, bunkers, or whatnot, trees. Uh, you can't cut or harm uh, live trees or, or li living things. Um, and if you want to use water that's found there, uh, we, 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 we require you that you have to filter it or purify it. Um, but be mindful, Travis. Um, I know you're getting into backpacking, whatever. Uh, certain things filters don't filter out. And you got to be careful in areas that are highly in an agricultural zone, such as DD Action Park, that you can get a lot of uh, fertilizer runoff um, and, 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 uh, that are chemicals in, in that water source, and you're going to be drinking it. Obviously, in a pinch, um, I don't, Paul, I don't think there's a creek that runs from that stagnant pond. I think it's just stagnant pond. But honestly, stagnant water, I've, I've drank it plenty of times backpacking uh, with, with just a simple uh, 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 Sawyer filter. Uh, it takes a lot of that stuff out. A lot of times, if you're going to filter um, or even just use purifying tablets, um, I would pre-filter it with like a bandana or something like that. So you're just kind of skimming off a lot of the, uh, the, the, the muck and, and dead algae and stuff that you find up inside there. Uh, but just be mindful that, you know, uh, 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 the wine dot area, it's all soft for water. So it's going to taste like ass no matter what you do. And it's going to smell like ass. But you know what? That soft for water is a nice little bath to take to keep keep ticks and, and critters from, from crawling up on your on your on your and biting you and feeding off you. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, so so if, if natural water resources are available um, and, and done properly, you're, you're, you're totally cool with, with uh, um, yeah, the, yeah, the poop pond. Yeah, for sure, dude. Uh, dude, I, I, I won't even lie, man. I, I've drank some questionable water like that. But you know what, man? Dude, it's better than dying of dehydration. That That is for sure. Um, but it's always been filtered and, or, or purified. Um, never never, never going to the, the backwoods without without one or the other. A lot of times built for me personally. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, water will be provided. A certain allotment of water will be allowed for you to start off with. Um, but, as always, if you find natural water sources, you want to drink your own pee, man, Whatever, man, the challenges that put forth, a lot of times are the challenges that participants put upon themselves. Um, we're just here to make sure people are doing it safely and give people a little nudge every now and then to make sure it's a challenging, you know, good time. Um, so, that being said, um, if anybody else doesn't have anything for us, uh, we're finally getting our live video feeds to about the hour mark, which is cool. No more uh, overly drunken rambling anymore. Um, so that being said, um, Alex and I would, uh, really have, like to thank everybody for everyone's support, interest, tuning into our videos, uh, asking us questions, creating dialogue, uh, spreading the word, um, cause without you, our idea is just an idea. 
So, so thank you all. We hope you all had great holidays, and we can't wait to see you in this 2019 season. Uh, look forward to more coming from us, but uh, uh, things are pretty much solidified, I think, for the most part, and we can't, can't wait for, for, for Revenant. It's going to be awesome. So in the meantime, uh, join our uh, Omega Survival Gender Interest Group. Um, pose dialogue, ask questions. Any there, uh, both Alex, I, and a, and a bunch of other staff members are always present. And you know, let's 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 make this. You know, the more you folks want to get involved and immerse, the better this event's going to be. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I can only hold your hand and take you so far. Um, so let's 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 get on the same mindset. Let's all get involved and let's make this a, a, an awesome time. I can't participate, but you know what? You folks can, and I want to live vicariously through you. So help us help you, and let's let's have a great 2019 apocalyptic series. All right, cool. We'll talk to you all soon. Peace. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.